Uh, when you mentioned uh, Wasley Kandinsky, mm -hmm. um, that's particularly interesting to me uh, because I, I do uh, abstract art uh, with a computer and um, uh, I focus on colors and shapes and I believe you said that Kandinsky um, uh, emphasized the he color. Did. He did. He did. And he was also very interested, he believed that shapes had inherent colors that fit them and he to to support that theory he sent out postcards about a thousand postcards to people in his town and when they came back asking about colors and shapes what color is a triangle what color is a circle what color is a square and then he compiled that information and he found it was pretty unanimous that people thought that squares were a certain color and circles were supposed to be a certain color so not only did he believe that colors had certain vibrations that responded to people's visual cortex and then that went and re resonated within their souls and caused an emotional response. He also felt that the shape and its color had the same impact on people. And so he started out with his work, he was very representational or fairly representational in his work. And as he moved through his process over the years, he became more and more interested in how far he could push his paintings from what he called the referent, from the reference, reference material to become, still cause a response in the viewer, but not a response based on its representation. So, for example, he did a series of paintings called The Blue Rider, and when it started, it was uh, you, pretty clear it was a blue horse and a rider and hills and some buildings. And then as he, over his career, he continued to rework that image, and towards the end, you would never guess that there was a horse and a rider. But that was what he was interested in, was pushing things to the point where it wasn't representational anymore, but still created an emotional response in the person that was more pure based on color and form. So your work sounds like you're wrestling with some of those same issues about shape and color and abstraction. My first uh, degree was uh, electrical engineering and, and I, I um, started work as a, uh, a programming computers for Bell Labs and uh, uh, so uh, when I became interested in art after studying at the, uh, the University of Paris, I, uh, I wrote computer programs to uh, automatically create or uh, the computer would create the artwork mm -hmm. and um, then uh, my uh, artistic contribution would be to select from what the, the computer has an opportunity to create something like mm -hmm. 20 million uh, uh, pieces of art uh, with an inventory of shapes and colors and uh, and then I would watch as they came up on the screen and I would select what I thought was uh, worth printing and um, I have my, on the walls of my apartment, I have uh, uh, paintings uh, that have been done that way. Uh, but the, the, in, in college, I, I had a couple courses in psychology, so uh, since uh, I was doing abstract work with the computer, I tried to relate that to the uh, rope chart, uh, mm -hmm. the charts uh, that I study in psychology. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had a little uh, success with that one. Uh, a friend of mine that's a professor of uh, psychology uh, was able to see some uh, symbolic uh, meaning in the in the computer work. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know that the computer actually, if, if we if we believed in Ouija boards, we could also say <laughs> that... Uh, <laughs> so let me, may I ask you, you call these paintings, the work that you're doing, do you actually use paint to then paint the pictures that you generate on the computer, or are you calling the image that comes off of your printer a painting? Well, actually, I'm calling the image that comes off the computer, the printer. It, it's ink on paper, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can get uh, 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 more uh, elaborate uh, canvas mm -hmm. to go through the computer sure. printer. Uh, so, uh, I, I also thought of the possibility that if I uh, was really uh, one that I really liked, uh, it could be reproduced by a, a painter just copying mm -hmm. uh, with oil on canvas. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the reproductions that are in my apartment, they're, uh, they were compu uh, made with a printer, mm -hmm. and they're eight by, um, 8 by 10 with a metal frame. Well, I think that gives us something in common then, because the, the way that you use the computer as a tool is much the way that a photographer uses the camera as a tool, and now perhaps a computer along with the camera as a tool to create their art. And when we were talking earlier about 
um, photography competing against paintings and often being seen as less of a fine art form because it can be made multiples. You can make multiples of the same image, whereas painting there's generally one and so it has more of a value in some people's eyes. But it, the work that you're doing is more similar to photography and it's still as valid as art and you're calling it painting, which I think is really interesting. And I'm not saying that it's not painting, mm -hmm. but I thought that that was interesting to me that it's computer generated, but it still is considered a painting or fine art, much the way the photography has had to struggle to be considered a fine art form alongside its, its fellow painting. Perhaps I could enter some of my work in the fair you could. in Essex next yes, year. Yes, you could. It's open to anyone who wants to enter work, and it's free if you enter before a certain deadline. And it's a wonderful show because it's very democratic. There's all levels of work. Children enter, and they all receive participation awards. In the past, I have also won other awards there. I've won a second place and an honorable mention. So they do have awards for each individual category. So your work would be entered in the digital, digital artwork category, which has been separated out from other. It used to be part of the photography category, but then they found that it really wasn't a level playing field because digital artwork is really its own genre and very separate from photography. And just because a lot of photography do use digital work, it was being lumped together, but they're really not the same. So now they're two separate categories. So you could, you could enter your work in the digital artwork category. But your photographs that won, uh, mm -hmm. that competed with uh, paintings and it sculptures. Did. It did. So you weren't in a category. Um, not for best in show. There's first, second, third, and honorable mention prizes awarded in each category. So painting would have those awards, photography would have those awards, sculpture would have those awards. But then the best in show is uh, all categories. There's only one given for any category. So first you won the uh, uh, best? The no, it doesn't work that way. I didn't win any of the other awards. You didn't win in photography? I did not. Mm -hmm. I did not. No, I did well, not. That's interesting. But in the past I have. Mm -hmm. This was the third year that Progressive has done the Progressive Pick Award, Best in Show Award. Mm -hmm. And I've been entering this show as well as many other shows nationally for about four years. In you, Vermont. You nationally shows, but they're mm -hmm. all in Vermont? Um, no, I submit work to shows all over the country. Oh. And I have a piece in Wisconsin at the, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the Marshfield Clinic, which has a biannual show, and they purchased one of my pieces. I won a Best in Show Award at that show, and they purchased, or I donated the piece to them that won the award for their permanent collection. And I've also participated in other shows in the Midwest and won awards for my work through those shows as well. I also sell my uh, artwork. And uh, a question that came up to me was that uh, uh, since uh, it's uh, printed, uh, printed from the computer, mm -hmm. uh, I could theoretically sell the same work more than once. Mm -hmm. I, I never have done that. but. Uh, uh, you do that with your uh, your photographs, yes. don't you? Yes, I do. Yes. And I think that what you're talking about is another challenge that photography has had, and it may be a similar challenge to printmakers or any artist that works in editions where there's more than one of the same piece. Paintings we're used to, there's one painting, and the painter painted it, and that's all there is. Whereas with things like lithographs and silk screens, and artist books, a person can make a, an edition. And so a lot of photographers, once they become fairly famous, they'll do limited editions of their prints where they'll make only so many copies of each image. And that increases their value because there's only maybe 25 in existence and they won't make any more than those 25. But it's more common for people who are emerging artists. They don't often limit themselves in that way. So we have uh, your award-winning photograph mm -hmm. here on the show, yep. and, but if you sell that, uh, the person that buys it, they won't object to having the show repeat, perhaps uh, around Vermont? And I, my experience has been that people feel flattered if they have bought my photograph and then they see it some other place, or it gets some attention in the newspaper, or they feel 
really flattered. It's, they own it, and they own one, and it's, it's exciting to them. Mm -hmm. So I, I haven't had people feel like, oh, wow, I bought one, and now there's another one in existence. I haven't had that experience. Mm -hmm. Generally, people feel pretty proud. Yes, I would feel happy if, uh, if I bought a painting and then I saw it, or right. photographed it exactly. and then I saw it on TV. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because it makes it more, you know, other people like it too, so it validates your own choice. Mm -hmm. So I think that it does make people feel good when they see the work other places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.